All right, so a uh, viewer that is a regular of uh, my Twitch and YouTube, the Venom Within, um, wanted me to join a tournament for his uh, new website, uh, the Freak, uh, sorry, the Freehawk.com, and um, yeah, this is a random Pokemon tourney. So basically, everyone gets a team of six Pokemon that they have to use, and apparently, apparently, I'm allowed to use an Uber if I get it. Like apparently, some people got some Ubers, and um, I end up getting Gothitelle, which uh, you know. With Shadow Tag, and I I asked him, am I allowed to use Shadow Tag on Gothitelle? And he's like, yes. Which, um, you know, I'm actually, I was pretty ecstatic about, because from my perspective, that's pretty much one of the only ways I have to win on this team. So, um, yeah, that's how I'm going to try to do it, as uh, he's going to go ahead and leave with Garbodor. And, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do this. As I said, uh, we did not choose the Pokemon. We could change, uh, you know, obviously pick our own sets, but we couldn't change the six Pokemon we got. Anyway, so I got Braviary, and I decided to run a Choice Band Adamant one looking at his team, because obviously you can take a look at your opponent's team and uh, change them in between battles. And uh, I just thought that would probably be the best way to attack that right now. Um, and, yeah, he's going to go ahead and set up Spikes against uh, my Mandy Buzz here, but that's fine because this is my Defogger. And I'm just going to go ahead and do that as he uh, withdraws now into his um, Klefki. And uh, Klefki, looking at his team, was like the juiciest thing that I could see that I might actually be able to get off a, um, you know, a Gothitelle thing. So I'm going to go ahead and switch out into that. And uh, this guy is the host of the tournament. I, I don't know if it was uh, luck or whatever um, or some, uh, you know, other methods that got us matched up round one. But that's fine. He's a pretty cool dude. Um, but, uh, yeah, anyway, so, he cannot switch out because of my Shadow Tag, but he appears to be a Calm Minder as well, so it's gonna be pretty interesting. However, my Gothitelle is max special defense, so I feel pretty confident about, uh, you know, matching up against this thing, and, uh, yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and start Calm Minding each other. He does have an advantage, um, I think he has a Calm Mind advantage on me at this point, and I end up misclicking one of these turns, I believe, and I haven't done it yet, but I think I accidentally used Psy Shock. Um, here I go for a T-Wave, because I figure that if I can get any, uh, Parahaxes, it's only advantageous to me. Uh, obviously he's gonna be able to go first with his, uh, pro you know, a, um, status moves anyway, due to his, uh, Prankster ability. But, um, anyway, this, that was a misclick. I did not mean to Psy Shock that turn, because I knew that I needed more Calm Minds to actually damage this thing, so. I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, keep Calm Minding, as, uh, he continues to Calm Mind, and, yeah, sorry about this, but, uh, we're gonna watch this little Calm Mind Stall War right now, because that's how, you know, it rolls right now. And, uh, yeah, more Calm Minding by me, and, uh, more Calm Minding by him, and everyone just has a clear Calm Mind at this point. How fantastic. Alright, so, uh, yeah, he's paralyzed, and that's, uh, a thing that is good for me, as I get, I'm able to make up a Calm Mind on him. I don't really know what move he has, but like I said, I am max special defense, so I'm pretty sure even after he gets six Calm Minds, he's not going to be able to hurt me much. Um, and I will be doing damage against his regular defense stat due to the fact that my move is Psy Shock. So, uh, yeah, that's why I'm pretty confident about this matchup. Now, um, yeah, there's some more Calm Minding, and I also decide to Calm Mind, and I really probably should have uh, sped this part up even further, so... But I didn't, and uh, you gotta live with it. And yeah, another calm mind. Uh, his trainer looked fantastic, though. By the way, doesn't it just look fabulous? Anyway, I don't even know what to talk about because we're just calm minding at this point. We're both trying to get to plus six special attack and special defense. He cannot switch out. He is forced into this matchup. And like I said, I feel uh, you know good about it. So um, yeah, as you can see, I am going first this turn because he's actually going to switch to an attacky move, and he goes for a draining kiss, which. Uh, just tickles me. Actually, no, he gets Parahaxed here. Now he goes for a Draining Kiss after um, I go for a Psy Shock. And as you can see, my Psy Shock is going to be doing a little over half. Actually, I crit him, so that's uh, really sucky for him. Um, but uh, keep in mind, I'm not getting any stats, so I'm doing a, li I'm doing a little under half, I think, with a Psy Shock if it didn't crit. So that's pretty nice. Um, and as you can see, his Draining Kick... Kiss basically just negated my leftovers. It's doing absolutely nothing. Got the tell. Um, is totally outpacing this thing. So he's going to get Parahax here. He said he was actually going for a Reflect, which really does suck for him because a Reflect would have actually reduced the power of my Psy Shocks. Um, but he doesn't get it off due to the Parahax I set up, and he is going to rest now, which um, is fine. It's actually whatever. It doesn't matter at all because at this point, um, yeah, he's not going to be able to survive three turns of my Psy Shock. So. Yeah, he's going to rest, but now I'm going to be able to 3-KO him, so 
finally, this little stall war, stall war is over, and uh, yeah, this is why Shadow Tag is banned on Gothitelle and every other Pokemon that gets it. This is why Mega Gengar is banned, because Shadow Tag is a ridiculous ability, and it leads to things like this. I mean, there's literally nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do. But uh, I don't really feel bad, because uh, it's not against the rules of his tournament, and um, I know that other people have straight up gotten, like, Uber Megas. I noticed uh, one guy had a, what is it? I think Mega, um, I thought I saw Mega Kangaskhan, maybe it was something else, but some people have straight up Ubers, <laughs> so, um, and my, most of my team is, oh, I don't think I have a single OU in my team, other than this, uh, Uber Gothitelle, so, there you go. It's gonna go into Skarmory, which is a good play, because he can obviously phase me with Whirlwind, and I can't really do much Psy Shock. My final move is, um, Rest, so I didn't actually have a, um, special move that could actually do special damage, which would have been helpful against this Skarmory, but oh well. He's going to, like I said, Whirlwind. He gets me into Ditto here, and I'm going to go ahead and transform um, due to my ability. I am Scarfed. It's one of those um, sweep-stealing, you know, um, Ditto sets. But I figure, why the heck not go for a Stealth Rock while I'm here? And now I'm locked into Stealth Rock, so I have to switch out. He is not. I'm just going to go into Mandibuzz because I really do need to defog away these Stealth Rocks. I'm hoping he doesn't Whirlwind here, actually. Um, but he doesn't. He goes for a Brave Bird, so that's fine. I was actually super afraid of the Whirlwind because then I would have taken 25% on Mandibuzz for nothing, and he would have gotten damage on something else. It would have been really bad if he, like, phased me into Brave Yari, for example, because this is a Rocky Helmet set. Um, Skarmori, so... Yeah, I'm going to go for a Roost now. I probably should have just defogged right off the bat. Um, probably a bad play, but he's going to Roost too, so... End up working out instead of uh, just going for the defog. So now I'm going to go for the defog because, um, I mean, obviously it's going to get rid of the stealth rocks I set up as well. No, I go for a taunt first. That's fair. I didn't want him to whirlwind me or something. There you go. Uh, I got him on the whirlwinds, and now he is going to switch out. He goes into literally trash, which got cut off um, because, uh, you know, Showdown has more characters than uh, actual Wi Fi. Oh well. Um, yeah. I uh, Wait, did I defog? No, I go for a foul play, which did damage to this thing. Now I'm going to defog. I know I defog one of these days. I'm like, fine, I, I, I guess I can get rid of my SR. And plus, I know he's probably going to try to set up spikes on me anyway. Um, but no, he's going to go for a gunk shot now. And uh, it does some damage, but not a whole lot. And uh, yeah, I actually feel pretty confident against this Garbodor. Um, because my foul play is using his attack stat, and uh, it's a decent attack stat, and I don't think he can do anything to me. I mean, the best you can hope for it with Gunk Shot is a uh, poison, but it's just a regular poison, so it's more like an inconvenience than an actual threat to Mandibuzz, and there you go. He uh, isn't doing much, and I'm just confident just keep going for foul play uh, to try to get rid of this guy. And um, pretty much when he said that Klefki was his win condition, though, so uh, this is going to be a very solid match. You can probably tell by the time amount of time this match is that it's pretty stally, which, uh, you know, this is the Pokemon we got, and I, I noticed right at the, you know, the beginning of the battle that I don't really have a lot, you know, Pokemon to counter, you know, to, you know, hit Melodic hard. I don't have Pokemon that can hit Skarmory pretty much at all, so I kind of figured it was going to turn into a, you know, a stally, long match like this, which is not a bad thing per se. It's just, uh, the way things go. Anyway, uh, he finally gets a poison, and he crits me at the same turn, so that's uh, not nice, as he goes into Salazzle, and i um, just going to go for a roost because I need HP back. And uh, this Salazzle is really scary, because after a uh, nasty plot, I'm 99% sure I can go ahead and KO my only water Pokemon uh, with Sludge Bomb, because it's also part Fairy. I have, um, what is it, the Water Starter Primarina on this team, but yeah, you just go for a nasty plot. My only real hope to check this thing is my Assault Vest Guzzlord, and um, I'm just going to come in and try to go for an Earthquake. He ends up switching out because he probably knows that I'm Assault Vest. Um, it's probably the most common set you're going to see on Guzzlord. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to go for that Earthquake, and it's going to do absolutely nothing to the incoming Melotic, so uh, that's that's not great. Um, like I said, not really sure what to do against this Melodic. I'm just going to go into Brave Yari here. Like I said, I am Adamant and Choice Band. I decided Adamant Choice Band because looking at his team, he has, you know, some bulky, slow Pokemon that I don't really need to worry about outspeeding. The only thing that's faster on his team is Salazzle, so I was thinking about going for a Scarf set to try to outspeed that, but I, I, I just knew that I needed the damage against this Melodic because I really don't have much. I need the damage against the Melodic. I, you know, I just need the extra damage against some of his really bulky Pokemon. So, um, yeah, he's just going to go ahead and recover. He sees that I'm doing far, uh, doing more than he can recover for. He probably knows at this point that I'm banded, 
And um, he makes a good play here going out in a Skarm, which of course resists Brave Bird, and he also has Rocky Helmet, and after the recoil from, um, you know, the, uh, you know, the first Brave Bird, and now I'm going to take recoil here, and I'm going to take a hit from, um, you know, his uh, Rocky Helmet. That puts Braviari at just 20 HP, and um, I couldn't switch into Stealth Rock, so... Uh, Manny Buzz, I have to go into it. If he goes for a Stealth Rock, I need to be able to get rid of it in order to get go back into Braviari at some point. I still want to keep Braviari because I really do like that damage against uh, Melodic. I could switch into Return instead of Brave Bird and uh, still do okay damage. So um, I want to keep Braviari alive, and in order to do that, I do need a Defog. I cannot let him have that Stealth Rock up. As he uh, now goes back into Salazzle, which is uh, you know kind of what I expected. And, uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to go right back into Guzzlord, although at this point he can probably just, uh, get some damage on my Guzzlord in the switch, and, um, if it keeps, you know, switching out like this, you know, um, Guzzlord is gonna get worn down very quickly, and I know that, but I really don't have a choice. I can't, you know, afford to let this thing, you know, go wild with Nasty Plot, uh, because Mandibuzz can't do anything to it, and I really don't want to take a, even a unresist, you know... I don't want to take a Sludge Bomb on uh, Mandibuzz at all, because I need to keep Mandibuzz alive to keep Stealth Rocks down. And, um, yeah, he ends up going into Garbodor here. I was actually not sure why. I guess he wanted to trigger Aftermath. Um, so that's a thing that ended up working out. I was going for a Dragon Tail to phase out um, Skarmory or something if it decided to come in, you know, to uh, be immune to Earthquake and stuff. But he ends up giving me a Beast Boost, and I'm like, you know what? I, I, let's see how much a plus one crunch does in this thing. Although I should have known after seeing the Psy Shock damage earlier, this thing is probably max defense. But I'm like, you know what? Let's give it a try. And yeah, I, I do less than half, and then I hurt myself with the Rocky Helmet, and I wear it. I wore down my own Gus Lord due to that. That was a really dumb play. Oh well, I'm gonna go into Mandibuzz now because I want to go uh, get in on it before he sets up Stealth Rock. Uh, pretty obvious play. Mandibuzz uh, is my defogger, but is also weak to Stealth Rock, so if I can actually, you know, set it down on the turn he goes for Stealth Rock, that's probably best. And I did, and I'm gonna go for that defog again, as he switches out again into this Salazzle again, and uh, at this point, he knows my Guzzlord is super weak, and he's probably just gonna try to go for a Nasty Plot, and, um see if he can kill me at plus two, but like I said, I don't really have a lot of plays. If he has a nasty plot, I can't go into Primarina, because Primarina can't take a plus two sludge bomb from this thing, um, because it's weak to it, so yeah, I'm just kind of hoping Guzzlord can do it. If, it. if it can't, my only hope is really Ditto. If, if it, I cannot take this hit, then my only hope um, to stop this thing is Ditto. Uh, which is a scary situation, so yeah, he's gonna go ahead and sludge bomb me, and he does take out uh, Guzzlord, so... Gus Lord, you useless pile of crap. Anyway, um, so yeah, I'm just gonna go into Prey, go into Ditto, get the Imposter up. Uh, for those who don't know, um, what, you know, Ditto transforms, including by Imposter. I do copy his stat changes as well, so I also have the, uh, Nasty Plot, and I just go for the Flamethrower. I go for it in case he wants to go into Skarm, um, but, uh, yeah, I figured it was the same base power, and I did want him to, just for free, go into Skarm. And he ends up letting Salazzle die here, which... At the time, I thought it was a really, really poor play. Um, he should have definitely kept it alive, because Salazzle checked a lot of my team at this point. He could have switched it out. I, it's not like I can set up hazards on this team. Um, so he could have, you know, kept harassing me with it due to the, how fact how fast it is. So I think that was a huge misplay on his part, because uh, that Salazzle really could have been useful to him later. And, uh, yeah, I'm just not a fan of that play. So uh, he's going to come in and kill Ditto with Marowak. I decided just to take the damage. Uh, looking at his team, like I said, Salazzle's the only fast thing he has, so I feel pretty confident about letting Ditto die. In fact, the only reason I was keeping Ditto around is for Salazzle. So, um, yeah, I decided to take the damage on the Marowak was probably the best play. So um, I actually pivot here into Mandibuzz. I knew that that would force a switch on the Marowak into Skarmori, and I wanted to get, you know, the uh, ahead on the switching game, so... Pretty nice play for me, pat myself on the back as uh, he can't get anything free, and I'm going to end up taunting this Melodic, which actually isn't awful, because with it taunted, it can't use um, any status move it has, it can't go for a recover, so um, that's actually not awful. But I am going to go for a Roost now, because I really do want to get um, Mandibuzz a little more healthy, because I, it, it's starting to get in KO range. So, uh, yeah, I need a Roost, and even if he does have Ice Beam, obviously Roost is going to ground me, so I'm not going to be weak to it. Obviously, Mandibuzz is more physically bulky than specially bulky, at least mine is, but I still end up taking the unstabbed Ice Beam from this Melodic pretty darn well. So, yeah, he's obviously running bulk on this Melodic, too. In fact, we're both running a punt bulk set, it looks like, which is why this battle has taken so long, and we're still not even done. 
So, um, it's still taunted, but, you know, taunt doesn't last very long. So, I'm just gonna go into Primarina and, uh, hope to make use of that taunt. As he also switches, so, it's a double switch here. And he goes into Skarm, which, you know, is actually the matchup I want. Because, uh, Primarina is really the only way I have to deal special damage at this point. So, um, yeah, I'm just kind of hoping that, uh, he stays in so I can hit with my Z move. Um, which is, uh, Oceanic something. Oceanic, uh... Uh, tell me what it is, game. Oceanic Oper Operetta, yeah. Apparently some people are getting banned on YouTube, uh, or at least they're having their videos marked as copyright due to Z-Moves. Hopefully that won't happen here. Um, if not, I'm going to have to edit this video later, uh, this scene out. But um, apparently it's been matching content claims by Nintendo. Screw you, Nintendo. Um, but yeah, seriously, thanks for making the good game, yeah. Not even mean screw you, Nintendo. Don't don't come after me, Nintendo, please. All right, so, um, Melotic is not going to take much damage from that, unfortunately, because it's a water move, I guess a water Pokémon. But I do have Energy Ball, so I'm just going to go for that, and uh, it's super effective, and it can do... It looks like it's doing about half, so... Um, eventually, though, I, I should get a crit or a special defense drop, which will allow me to win this matchup. Uh, he's going to go for a Scald, trying to get a burn off on me, and he ends up getting it with the first Scald, of course, but... Uh, and he gets the burn, uh, which is fine, because I'm going to go for an Energy Ball... And get the special defense drop, so we both kind of got what we wanted that turn. And uh, he's going to get the burn, which is going to give him residual damage against my Primarina, which he is super afraid of right now. Uh, he doesn't have Salazzle anymore to threaten me with Sludge Bomb. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's my Primarina coming in here and uh, do work. He's going to go for a Moon Blast. I was actually kind of predicting a switch. I decided to switch it up into something like that, but it's kind of a fail. Because uh, most of his Pokemon actually resist Moon Blast at this point, so... Whatever. I'm going to go for a Sparkling Arrow against this thing. Obviously, it's super effective. And uh, that is a dead Marowak, so... Die, you marowak thing. As I'm going to continue getting burned and stuff. And um, in comes Skarmory again, which kind of was a questionable play. His Melodic actually outsped my Primarina, so he probably could have just came in with that instead of going into uh, Skarm here. It seemed actually like a really weird play, because Skarm can't take special moves from, uh, you know, this thing very well at all. As you can see, I'm doing uh, way more than half with my, um, you know, Sparkling Area. And, uh, yeah, he, he can't he can't stall me out. I, I, if I was him, I was would have went into Melodic earlier and tried to save Skarm, because Skarm is a huge problem for my team. Um, even my remaining team, I, I really can't do much to Skarm. Uh, in fact, this Primarina is really the only thing I had that can take it out, and, uh, yeah, th another slight misplay by him, I think, but, uh, he's a good battler, though. Just uh, made a couple of misplays, because I thought, like, looking at our teams beforehand, I thought that he had a much better team, but, um, I'm happy with how I played, to be honest. Anyway, this last Pokemon is Melodic, so basically, he might be able to stall me here if I don't get a special defense drop or a, um, you know, a crit or anything. And if he does, is able to do that and stall me out, um, at the very least, I want to get keep this thing in yellow so I can come in and revenge kill with my um, Braviary. So that's the goal right now, is uh, if he is going to be able to, you know, wait for the burn to kill me, the very least I can, you know, come in. Because we saw how much that Brave Bird did earlier. I don't think he's going to recover that much. I just need to keep him in killing range of Braviary. So the reason I kept it alive, gosh darn it, and uh, he's going to try to go ahead and finish me off with Scald now. He's going to get it, and uh, but he's still too low. He's not going to be able to survive a Choice Banded Brave Bird from Braviary. So, that was a really nice game, the Venom Within. And uh, sorry to knock you out of your tournament in, like, the first round. Kind of blows for you, but... Uh, yeah, I'll also plug in his website that he's doing this on. It's a Pokemon community. Eh, a smallish Pokemon community that he's trying to build up. So, make sure you check it out and... Uh, this tournament is actually pretty cool if you want to follow that. And, uh, yeah. I think he'll do tournaments in the future there, so you might want to check that out at some point. Link in the description. Anyway, today's question of the day is, what is your favorite setup move? Um, you saw a lot of Calm Minding in this battle. Calm Mind is a very nice uh, setup move because it increases your attacking power and your defensive powers, really specially. But as for me, I still have to say Dragon Dance is my favorite setup move. Um, the combination of attack and speed is just unparalleled, um, you know, for being a sweeper. So I'll leave a comment about that, your favorite setup move. And I guess you can include a Z move now if you wanted to. Like, Z Splash is kind of becoming a thing on Gyarados. I still want to try that out. 
Ah, one of these days I'm gonna have to remember to actually make a Z Splash um, Gyarados. But leave a comment about that and see you guys again next time. Later.